Hello there, here I am quote unquote playing the Great War Mod for Hearts of Iron 4. Now I chose this setup we're going for here for a very specific reason. I was filming on a Friday night at the end of the heat wave. I wanted some gameplay I could get where I didn't have to do anything or an absolute bare minimum. And I remembered that I kind of like Hearts of Iron 4 and thought there's loads of times playing Hearts of Iron 4 when I've just not had to do anything. And then I spotted the Great War Mod in the Steam Workshop and I thought, well, there's an opportunity to not do anything because the Great War was all about sitting still and just dying all the time. So what we're going to do is do that as the ultimate sitting still nation, the Swiss Confederation. We are going to be Switzerland, we're going to be in the Great War, and I might not have to do anything if I play my cards correctly. But we want to do something for the sake of actually playing the game at some point. So we are actually going to intervene in this great war, of course, and get a little bit of action started. But you'll just see the theme of not really wanting to do anything is going to impact many of my decisions. I'll say a quick word about the mod we're using, the Great War mod, meaning it's a World War I version of Hearts of Iron 4. This, for our purposes, doesn't actually make a massive difference because the World War II, World War I situation in this part of the world, it was kind of the same situation and as far as the game's concerned, it is. It's just that the techs we have here are different things, our weapons have different numbers attached to them, but they're all going to work the same. Apart from one thing, you can invent entrenchment, which is a different form of fortification, separate to the usual land forts system, and separate to the entrenchment mechanic of the same name in the usual game, just to make things extra confusing, where essentially you can build trenches in an area to increase the defense of your units, which increases the viability of not clicking the mouse and having your units just sit there and never die, which is my overall grand strategy. When it comes to our national focuses, you see me here grabbing the neutrality focus. You have the option to very actively go for one side in the war from the beginning. We're actually not going to do this, counter to what I said earlier. I'm going to start by being neutral, simply because I need some time to prepare. I don't want to join World War I as soon as it happens. I want to massively fortify our mountain borders and then join on either side, we'll just see later, and let them die while I sit back as the dictator of an increasingly authoritarian Switzerland, because that's the politics I'm trying to spread through my focuses, and to sit back and be the god king of my mountain kingdom, watching all of the ants dying around the base to our massively complicated entrenchments. That's the dream. Here's a look at all of the entrenchments being built. Strangely, entrenching is actually slower than building land forts. It takes like 15 days to build a land fort, but way longer to make entrenchments, and entrenchments also go up to level 10. It takes many in-game years to fully entrench a location. Much longer than fortifying it for whatever reason, I don't know, I guess this mod is actually a beta mod, so the balancing is probably all over the place. Just grabbed an important army doctrine there called Entrenchment Battalion. This massively increases the extent to which your guys can entrench on their own, boosting their stats if you don't move them, which we're not going to be doing. We can also take some decisions here about whether to make the army better at moving and fighting or sitting still and fighting. Well, you know what choices I'm making whenever that comes up. I'm trying to go down the industrial focus route. But interestingly, this mod actually puts some date restrictions on the focuses. So you can't industrialize that quickly. You have to let some time pass before you can keep going down that path. Well, we're letting time pass pretty fast here. And here's me setting up the queue, just ordering my ants to entrench absolutely everything. Then I can sit back and do absolutely nothing. This is ideal. This is the washing paint dry gameplay that I'm going for. I don't know to what extent it seems that I'm joking. I'm not joking. I do like sitting back and just waiting for something to happen and the stress-free feeling of progress that comes from doing that. Well, here's a look at the army I've put together. I'm making the generic seven infantry, two artillery army formation. Who knows whether this is a good idea in this mod? Well, we're going for it anyway, just for lack of anything else to do. I've also gone for heavy artillery instead of light. You have to make that choice in this mod. And we're not going to be moving, so heavy artillery seems like the way to go, of course. Now some news is coming through. France Ferdinand is dead. That's going to start stirring up some trouble over there. We can already see some war is breaking out. 
Now I need to monitor the situation and see will World War I happen. There was no guarantee it would actually go in the same way. I think I don't have historical focuses turned on, meaning it's more likely for something ahistorical to happen. Well, as it happens, it happens. There we go, World War I has started, a bit of world tension comes along. We need to see a little bit more for us to get involved, because as a neutral nation, the world tension stat has to be really high for us to be allowed to really participate in things that are going on. So this war needs to heat up for us to be potentially involved. For now, I don't really want to get involved anyway, we've still got preparations we can make. We'll just watch a bit of the fighting going on around us, and with any luck, nothing will happen because they're just going to be stuck, not really able to advance. Some bad news, Luxembourg is immediately destroyed, one of my favourite factions that I've played a lot of Hearts of Iron for, as in the past. Here's a cheeky focus I'm going for, Sanction France. There are a couple of focuses you can take that have the sole effect of making your neighbours dislike you. This is part of the focus tree that kind of plays into what I'm doing here, where you're being a cheeky Switzerland that's planning on getting involved at some point. So we do this sanction France focus, it just makes them hate us. It says something about trade sanctions, but I don't know if that actually affects the trade in the game. It doesn't matter too much. Here's what we're going for, this aggressive foreign policy focus. You can take this to stop being neutral for all intents and purposes. It makes everybody hate you. And you can sell guns to both sides along the way, so we're doing well over here. Let's let the little children fight it out for a bit before the big boys get involved. By the end of the year, not much has happened, so that's perfect. The war lines aren't really moving around. We could be joining the war at this stage if it wasn't for world tension. The factions are interested in us, or at least the Entente are interested in us. We'll see later the Central Powers are also interested in us, but for now, they didn't want us to join them, partially because we don't have the same ideology, which was something I was trying to change. We need to be authoritarian to potentially get in with these central powers, and I had wanted to be authoritarian. The problem is, we didn't get like a coup event coming along. Sometimes when you get your political support for something up really high, you get the option to like switch over to having that be your government type. Here we've got like half authoritarian, half democratic and we're just stuck being democratic authoritarians. Well, as long as people keep voting for Devon's Chaos and Slaughter party, I suppose that's okay. Now we need to start thinking about how we're actually going to join the war. And you can see I've deployed my troops to the north because joining on the side of the Entente gives us a natural advantage in that France and Italy, who have long borders with us, are in the Entente, so it's just easier for us to join them, plus we're technically Democrats, so it makes it easier for us to join them politically. Now here was an important discovery. I claimed the nearby bit of Germany, and this hugely increases world tension, just what I need. And it proves that while World War I might be a bit harrowing for the other world powers, the mere rumour that Switzerland might become involved in the war, that's the real thing to worry about. We've got them sweating now, and we can make it even worse by claiming France at the same time, because I still didn't know which way I was going to go with this. I thought I'll just claim everything, and we can easily get world tension up to 100% instantly. Everybody knows the Swiss powder keg is about to explode. This means I am now allowed to join Germany, apparently. They've got sufficiently worried. We're going to have our pick of the litter. Who do we want to win the war? Well, as I said, joining the Entente is the natural choice. However, that's why I decided to not go for it, just to stir things up a bit. So I redeployed my troops to face both Italy and France. We're going to join the Central Powers just for the amusement. Here was the big moment. I actually wanted to wait even longer because, as mentioned, those entrenchments take a long time to build. We've still got plenty more preparations we could make to become more invincible. But this message came up saying that my diplomacy with the German Empire is breaking down. This could be a result of me going through focuses that make them hate me and such, and the fact that I'm claiming their territory as well, and we're supposed to be different ideologies. So I thought, well, I'll show those newspaper men who's boss. I'm going to randomly ally to Germany just to show them how wrong they were. And so for the sake of an embarrassing headline, we have now joined World War I, and we are fighting Italy and France. Well, actually, not quite yet. I have to accept the request to also join the war. I'm just in the faction as a sideline player at the moment. But yes, we're going to join the war as well. 
and boom, most of our border is now hostile. We've got just about enough divisions here to have everything stationed with troops. And there we are at the top of the list of the Central Powers. Looks like the war's about even so far. The Entente has taken massive casualties but also has way more troops to lose. Well, we're going to put that to the test. Now they have to lose them against us. And indeed, early on, we see them tr start trying to get in. And we confirm that our numbers are very good. Our stats are way higher than theirs because we're being buffed heavily by terrain, by our entrenchments, by our other entrenchments from the other mechanic. And one day in the future, we'll also invent land forts. You actually can't build them in this mod until you invent them in like 10 years or something. We don't need them though. All we have to do is look at this screen we're looking at right now. As long as these numbers and these blobs are green, that's fine. And given the stats we saw just now, we have like 100 times the stats of the enemies attacking us. We're very unlikely to actually lose any of these battles unless they can do the old organization drain thing where they attack you with so many divisions at once that your guys get bored of killing them. Well, we'll see. The important thing is I don't have to do anything. I don't need to move. I'm not going to move. Everybody who comes into Switzerland will die. We'll give them the option to come in or not to come in. It's up to them, really. I'll leave the boys to it. Let's see how they do. As the slaughter goes on, we do need to keep track of a few things. One of them is how many people we have left to send into the slaughter. We don't have that much manpower. We're only a small country, and pretty much everyone that I could recruit has already been recruited to be our divisions holding the line. We could do with a couple more divisions to really shore things up. And of course, we need some reserve people to fill in for casualties. So we'll start expanding our conscription there. We don't want to go too heavy on that because it damages you economically to recruit millions of people. So we'll keep options open for later expansion. I tried to make another division there, but I think I ended up cancelling it due to lack of people. It takes a while for the conscription to go through. Starting to see some air attacks coming in. This is World War I, the dawn of air combat. So that will be a weakness of our sitting around plan. Our lack of an air force could allow the enemy to attack us while we're doing nothing. I was taking a look along the Western Front. Broadly speaking, our enemies, the Entente, have far more divisions than us set up on this particular front line. So perhaps they have an offensive advantage and perhaps that will trick them into attacking our positions. So far, we've lost about 700 people. Not very many when you consider the casualties we've inflicted on the enemy. We've already inflicted over 25,000 casualties against the French and over 12,000 against the Italians. I think we're also fighting the Japanese at the moment as well in there somewhere, can't quite remember. But essentially, we're trading extremely efficiently and that's what we need. They have so many people that in a pure war of attrition, that might not be a good enough ratio to avoid complete destruction if they just send everybody at us. But for now, things are going well. You can see they've cooled off on attacking us for a bit. There was a delay. They were obviously just planning an offensive because later they're attacking along the entire Western Front. It's a very long front as well, going all the way down there. Attacks all over the place and they're all green. Even our allies, where they're just sitting around entrenched, are able to hold off the enemy. So perhaps the World War I theme just makes defending better in general. So it's hard for the Entente to push. They'll want to push because they have so many divisions that will encourage the AI to think it can do this when it probably can't. So that leaves us in the ideal position I was looking for. We are slaughtering the enemy without doing very much. We're now up to 1k casualties there. But when I look at our casualties inflicted, it's something like 100,000 or maybe 200,000 between all of our foes. We're trading at least 1 to 100, maybe better than that. That's probably enough to kill everybody, I must say, if they do just attack us continuously and the entire war becomes a pocket at Sweden. I don't think they can kill us all at this rate, at the very least. Now I've essentially achieved my in-game or in real life goal of having the game play itself for me. We're going to win this war without giving very many orders because the enemy are going to kill themselves against our extremely powerful defenses. Maybe they will be able to break through our allies, I don't know. You'll have to find out in the future because this is going to be the end of the first part 
You might think, well, isn't this just the end of the campaign? We've done it, now we're just going to sit here and do nothing. Well, to some extent that's true, but there are a variety of things that I end up having to do, and a little bit more gameplay coming up, and a few twists and turns in the war. And I bet you want to know how this massive grind actually turns out in the end anyway. So why don't you join me for future parts of this series? I don't know how many there'll be, because since there is a lot of nothing, I suppose I'll be abridging it quite heavily. But find out what happened in this strange World War I scenario where it somehow became all about Switzerland, and just how many people we're going to kill by the end of this, by joining me for part two and more coming soon.